Hi, it's David from Electric Teaching, and I'm sitting on my back porch with the wind chimes and the birds chirping, etc. And I'm going to show you another video here, and a video, I'm starting a new video sequence, where we're going to do integration. We're going to do calculus integration with our graphing program. So the first thing you need to do is, if you haven't done so, you need to make your own grapher, unless you're just trying to learn some tricks here, which the tricks of Python and Pygame that I'm hoping to show you are going to be like graphing lines between curves and calculating areas, so we're going to be doing some calculus. I've already made a, uh, a little three-part series of how to do uh, integration with just simply Python, um, and an integration approximation, I should say. And what I'm trying to do is add to my grapher and add in another ability to it so that we can put a, um, a shaded area between the curve and the x-axis or between two curves as we do in calculus. Um, so for instance, if I was to put in um, on our equation, here's our function right now, let's put in x squared. And you can see how this one works if you haven't done the original sequence of make your own personal grapher and maybe another graph of X and what I'm hoping to do is shade red lines I'm just gonna graph a bunch of red lines from top to bottom between two points to simulate an area between curves and an integration which is to calculate the area between curves so let's get started here I'm gonna close this program uh, I have the ability to say no I don't want to quit altogether and hopefully it doesn't cause too many errors don't worry about the trace back callouts those are just telling you all the things I did while I was in the program, like uh, choosing a new graph, etc. Let's see, uh, here's the front of it, and I, I'd like to always uh, add a little bit to the comment of what I'm doing, including maybe a date here. So my own grapher now with uh, integrals, integrals, and um, let's call this May 2012, which is when I'm doing it right now. We're going to need a red color here, so let me put in a quick comment. Uh, adding a red color for integrals. Integrals, cool. And we're going to go red equal parentheses 200, 0. I don't like to go the whole 255, so I'm just doing about 200. It's a deeper red. So let's scroll down. i get a quick little synopsis of where we are as I'm going down. Here's our graph paper uh, function, which will graph the paper. Here's our main function, which has the setup so you can see where I'm you know, showing you you can do all the function inputs and as we go down here further we're gonna see our function or subroutine called um, graph equation and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the instruction we're gonna add an instruction down by the bottom of the window near where we say select G to do a new graph in fact let's copy this line and let's come down here and paste this in and let's paste this in and this isn't the instruction for a new graph this is instruction for doing integrals or integration so we can even say that integration uh, we're not going to say by the way if you haven't realized i'm using the same variable over and over again that's because i use the variable once and only once and so therefore it's kind of like a reusable variable and it's not that uh, it's perfect because I only just split it and that's the only thing I do with it. So I can leave it just instruct. I'm going to do select I. That's a key command, a keyboard uh, that I have, a keyboard key that I have not used yet. And we're going to do, not to add another graph, is to uh, maybe evaluate an integration. Integration. So that leaves it kind of blank uh, for whether we're going to do it between curves or just uh, between the curve and the x-axis. We've created the variable red, so I'll use the variable red here. We're already putting some text blitted 100 above the bottom. That's what height minus 100 does. Let's get it up to about 130, and I think that'll work fine. All right, let's scroll down. Now we've got, hopefully, um, the integration instruction made. We need to come down and basically start a new subroutine way down at the bottom. But before I do so, I need to I need to put in the command for um, the key when you select I. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a very similar um, command here. Oh, I'll just type it up again. It's no big deal. So a little comment here. This is the um, again the uh, 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 so keyboard. Um, 
command for uh, integration, integration. So it's an elif, and the event key that we're looking for, whoops, elif, almost got to look for those color, make sure the color's right when you're doing it. That's the user-friendly part about Python. Okay, we got a elif event, and what we're going to do is a key double equal capital K underscore I colon. And very simply, we're going to call out a new subroutine that I have not yet made. It's called integrate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the number of graphs, the number of graphs. That's going to be very important. I need to know if I'm, gra if I'm going to integrate between the x-axis or between two curves. So the number of graphs. And to be safe, we'll always pass EQ and EQ2, both equations, whether we're using them or not and then the k value so we know what size the grid is at. Now there's going to be a problem here if I'm passing the word graphs and the word graphs hasn't come into the subroutine. So I'm going to come up to the top of the subroutine here at the beginning of this function called graph equation and sure enough I did not pass graphs to this one. So I want to pass graphs in so that I can send it out to a new function Here's where I'm calling it up. This is the only place I call it up, I believe, I hope. We'll find out when I run it and I get errors. But I believe this is the only place we're calling it up. So that's now sending the graphs. Then let's double check that it comes into the my main that I believe I'm sitting in. And right at the top, right here, we do pass graphs in. So, you know, as I pass graphs through function to function to function, it becomes evident that maybe I should have made it a global variable and that's uh, something of your choice there is some uh, um, strategies I guess or some uh, slickness to programming as you uh, decide which to globalize and which to pass between your functions and routines coming all the way back down now to the bottom we're gonna now start adding the function in fact I'll just copy this so I don't mess it up we're gonna now define this function def this new function called integrate. We need a colon here. It's not just a call out. We're defining it. So a colon so it will uh, indent for us and then lay out everything we need to do. Um, it's always a good idea to make sure I put a comment on here, even though it's pretty obvious with the title. So the uh, function for integration. And then down here, the first thing I want to do, and I'll put a comment for it, is to setting the x values. And that's, uh, if you teach calculus, uh, that's the A and B values. The from We're going to integrate from one X value, A, to another X value, B. I misspelled there. And so we're setting the X values for integration is what we're doing. Into, sorry, integration. And I'll just put in parentheses uh, A comma B because that's what we're setting up here. Um, I'll name a new variable here x min value and very much like if you followed along in the previous code I'm setting up an array I'm setting up an array in fact I'm setting up a blank array for both the x min value and the x max value so I'm initiating new variables here don't have to do it like in C and other programs uh, where you have to initiate the variable as soon as you start using it in Python then it's acceptable and what we're now going to do is we're going to use these variables to create, or this array, the variables holding these arrays, to create the same type of thing we did where we we're putting in the, if you can look up right above here, the x values, the x values for plotting points on our curves before. So I'm going to use the same type of philosophy here. Um, let's go ahead and enter a program in. We're going to have to do an active. I always like to do the word active. It makes it a, it's kind of an obvious word. And I'm going to say active is true, and then what I'm going to do is start a while loop, which is an infinite loop until you tell it to stop, and we will do it until active goes to false. So I say while active. Uh, we need to clip part of the screen here. So we need to clip part of the screen. Let me type this in. Oops. Uh, to show the interval uh, part show the intervals that we're going to be using. Intervals, intervals. Get the spelling right here. Um, let's see. What I want to do is I want to do a screen. That's the name. That's a variable name. Screen dot clip, uh, excuse me, dot set underscore clip parentheses. And what we're going to do is we're going to clip 
just uh, below the command to quit because I want to leave the command to quit always on the window. So I'm going to just go right below that and I've looked up where those numbers are. I'm going to start it with the usual width, take me off the width of the graph area and go a little 10 extra pixels. And if I go 90 pixels down, that'll take me perfectly below the command for quitting so that it can stay on the screen as we move from one subroutine or function to another. We're going to run from the width uh, all the way across the screen, so width plus extra W. And then uh, let's move down to the height, height minus 130. So that's right uh, to the where I posted the integration part. Uh, the integration part. And that should give us a, enough room. This should be XY to XY when you do a clip screen. So now when I do any blitting or any instructions, none of the other string, uh, none of the other screen, uh, excuse me, none of the other uh, blitting or graphs that I've done will be affected. To make it clean, what you have to do is you have to constantly, remember I'm in an infinite while loop that's going, you know, 10,000 times per second, I don't know, but it's something up there, it's crazy. And so what it's doing is it's going through here many, many times per second. And what I do is I blank it all out and then I re-blit it and it keeps the text very clean in Python and Pygame combination. It's one of the neater tricks that I've learned over the years. Okay, what we need to do is now we need to do some instruction. So I'm just going to put some instruction. Uh, instruction for <clears throat> adding the interval, interval uh, parts. So... Let's see, we're going to do a um, same thing that I've always done, an instruct as the variable, because I just like to reuse this word over and over again. I only use it once. We're going to do a font.render, and I'm going to type in, let's see, type in the x, this is the instruction in, in green here, type in the x value that starts the into integral the integral so um, and then what I'm going to do is put a close quote which closes the instruction comma one for true and comma red because I'm doing consistently going with the red here on this now we need to blit this instruction so it's a screen dot blit parentheses and what I'm doing is blitting the instruct variable that I just typed up and I'm blitting it, blitting it to uh, the top left coordinate of where this box of text will go. And that's width plus 15. I'm nesting it a little bit inside and 110 down. So this will go below the instruction of Q to quit, I hope, the way it's working. And let's see. Yep, I just want to type in this part for now. Um, oh, I want another part of the instruction. After they do this first part, i got to nest, i got to give a, a kind of toggle it over to um, inputting the um, max value here. So let's do an exact same instruction, just a hair below it. I'm going to copy. Whoops, lost my screen there. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to now paste it. Make sure the indent is correct if you pasted it indented. And what we're going to do is just say type return. I'm going to say select return, I believe. Let me see, select uh, return or enter key. That's uh, the return word throws me. I'm kind of old school with the whole typewriter return thing. Apologize. And we're going to select enter uh, when done and uh, to add the max value. Okay. Um, the uh, end value, I should say, end value. Okay. And that's also in red, and we need to just nest this a little bit down. So I'm going to go down to 20 pixels down to 110 to 130 there off the top of the screen. Uh, we need to change the change the screen um, dot set underscore clip clip to none, so that everything else will work fine in case we do other commands. It's very important to reset it. And then I need the keyboard commands because I am pa I am moving out of one function with all my keyboard commands, and so they're not accessible right now. So what I need to do is I need to go copy my keyboard commands that I've made in previous parts where we have the ability to quit. I moved up just to the next uh, function above. And the ability to do the Q thing and restart everything. I don't need this first part about the Y-intercept part. So... Let's copy that part, 
In fact, wait a minute. We always need the update screen. I've done so many times I've forgotten the update and wonder why it doesn't work. So let's grab that now. And let's come down here and let's paste this in. Make sure everything looks good. I'm going to just fix this, update the screen, yes. And this is all nested in perfectly inside the while loop. And it should give us the ability to quit. Okay, I've done plenty. In fact, you would argue that I've done too much without checking it. So let's cross our fingers and see if this works. I'm going to hit F5 and see what happens. If I don't get an error, I'll be surprised. Looks like I might have got an error. Hang on one second. Okay, actually, I don't think I had an error. I just think Python was run too many times without resetting, and so it crashed on its own. That's normal. That's kind of why we built in the system exit so that it's safer just to exit completely every time. So it says if I hit I, I should be able to move to the integration side. Let's see if that works. Okay, we did get an error. I'm going to check. I don't hide my errors. I, just, I actually am kind of proud of my errors. I think that's part of uh, learning how to code is learning how to fix your errors. And it didn't like the screen white. And I should have said set screen, set screen to white. I think I know what that is. So let me move to so I should have said, sorry if there was a little um, pause there. Uh, I should have said screen fill here, screen fill right, <laughs> screen fill white. Let's see if that's uh, going to work now. Let's just do X equal. Let's hit I. Okay, I switched me over to the new screen. Q still visible. My instructions are still there. Next, in the next videos, we're going to set up the, uh, start using the array that we set up to display the x min and x max value and then of course down the road in several videos down the road we'll be able to uh, calculate the area shade in the area i'm david from electric teaching and i'm glad you're listening